everybody. I want to take some time today to go through a feature in the November 2021 update for Power BI. That update package includes a lot of new functionality. And in the next few videos, I'm going to be talking through a, a number of them. But today, I wanted to focus on the page navigator function. I think it's a really interesting feature. It provides some real shortcuts and ease of use in particular circumstances for page navigation, but it also has some significant drawbacks. And so I wanted to run through it with you and show you kind of what I like about it, what I don't, and give you the, the background in order to figure out whether it's going to be useful for your use cases as well. So what I want to do is jump into Power BI. And the first thing to know is that it's a preview feature. So you have to go to options. And when those pop up, we go to preview features and you have to turn on the, um, the new format pane. Make sure that's on in order to get the, the functionality here. Now, the one thing I'll warn you is there's, there's a major flaw in the format pane implementation. And what I found in the list of known issues is that when you create a new button now, there's no way to assign an action to it. And that's a huge problem because you can't then attach either a bookmark to it or page navigation or a web URL or anything that you would do with buttons. And especially given the fact that in one of the recent updates, Microsoft gave us this great functionality for custom buttons. And so now until December, it looks like we can't really use that in the the new format pane. But I want to show you this to you anyway. I think because of that flaw, you'll probably keep this turned off for a good part of the time until December when they fix it. But let's take some time today and just walk through that, that page navigator because I think it is quite an interesting feature. Um, so in order to access it, well, first of all, let me, let me show you the report I'm going to use as my example. This is my um, data challenge entry from challenge number two. And the reason I picked this is because it's heavily geared toward page navigation. So I've got my initial page of findings and for each each finding you go through and you click to a detail page. You can go back to the the key findings. And I've also got a page here which explains what I use to create the um, the report. And this page is a tooltip page, although I, I use it as a, a a direct page navigation page. I just use tooltip in order to scale the page the way I wanted it. So that's important for reasons that will become apparent soon. So if we go here, the way to access the new the new function is just go insert buttons and then navigator. And you'll see two options, page navigator and bookmark navigator. In the next video, we'll talk about bookmark navigator. But for today, let's select Page Navigator. And what that does, let's just try that again. Insert buttons, Page Navigator. There we go. And what that does is it automatically creates a group of buttons that correspond to the pages of your report. And one thing you'll notice here is that it created the page for sample, which is a hidden page. And I just, I put that in here just to illustrate this for the purposes of this video. But if you remember, sample is a hidden page, but info about is a tooltip page. And that didn't show up here. And so what we need to do, if we want that to show up, is to select that and then go to properties and go pages, and then click show tooltip pages on. And now what we can do is with each of these buttons, if we've got this the way we want showing both the hidden and the, and the tooltip pages, we can take and we can copy this. So just control C. And if we go to another page and hit control V, it copies the, the button structure to that other page. And then it knows it's position aware. So it knows that it's on the ANOVA page. And then if we click back to key findings, it'll take us there with the proper designation for that button. And there's there's a lot of formatting we can do. But in terms of this, this copy and paste, 
one thing to be aware is it's not dynamic. So if we were to change, let's go back in here and change our page options. And let's say we don't want to see either the tooltip pages or the hidden pages. Now, if we go to the ANOVA page, you'll see that it's, it's still the way it was, that it doesn't change dynamically. So what we'd have to do is delete this, go back and copy our, our new button structure over. So one of the nice things about this function is that there are a myriad of formatting options. And so if we go into shape here, what you can do is kind of automatically change the shape. So here to pill, um, here's hexagonal. Um, and one that I particularly like is if we go down here to the snip tab top right, and then you can, you can actually adjust the size of that snip. And it kind of looks like file folder tabs. And I happen to really kind of like the look of this. And what we can do is just adjust the, the height and the width of this a little bit, make it not so bulky, and shrink those down. And then what we can do is go, if we go into style, what it, you can do is just like any other buttons, you can adjust the, the hover color or font, the press color font selected. Um, so let's go down here and adjust the, the fill. So let's say what we want to do is um, on hover, we want to change that to that base red color in the theme of the, of the report. And we can change that here. And we'll clear that out. And then if we go here, as we hover, you'll see the, the color change. And we can, we can also set a press color and a default color and a lot of options that really kind of polish the look of your, <coughs> of your report. So one of the things, let's copy this over and I'll show you another really nice feature of this, which is if we copy this over to the ANOVA page and we just hit Control V now what we can do is if we go into rotation, I'm sorry, first thing we want to do is go into grid layout. And instead of horizontal, we can make this vertical. And we've got to resize it. And let's shrink the, the width down. And now what we can do is we can go to rotation and you can rotate these either together, the shape only, or the text only, depending on which, which of these blocks you choose. But let's rotate the, the whole thing 270 degrees. And now what we can do is, let's again adjust the width. And if we move that over, what we've now got is a really nice looking tabbed button set that we can we can use to navigate through our, our report. And that is that is I think one of the one of the really key features of this is the ability to customize this. But at the same time there there are some real limitations. And I think if we go back to the the key findings page, as I said early early on, I think this is really well implemented, but I don't actually see myself using it that often. Because from a data storytelling standpoint, you can't break these, these groupings into single buttons. And the other thing you can't do is you can't change them into custom icons. And I think the, the upgrade that we got a few months ago, really that expanded the custom icon view. Um, if we go in and take a look at my Challenge 16 report, one of the things I love is the ability to create these really refined custom icon buttons um, that I think just look really good, really support the navigation well. And unfortunately in the, the page navigator, at least at this point, you can't change these two custom icons. You're stuck with, with text and buttons. And so from a storytelling standpoint, I kind of see that as a big problem because what I like to do is typically have a finding and then have that 
that details button that lets you navigate to it rather than just giving the user a whole grouping of, of buttons and just leaving them to to navigate through the report on their own. I like to guide it based on the story that I'm trying to tell. And so that is that's where I currently see the the weakness in this, both from the kind of all or nothing approach of the the, the button groupings as well as the inability to use the the custom icons. But if what you're looking for is that full button grouping, um, I think this provides a great way to do it that really um, saves time, saves effort in terms of individual development of buttons and then having to group those together and align them um, and then change them for each page. So I hope that provides you a good overview of the the new functionality and gives you some food for thought in terms of how you might use that in your report. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about the Bookmark Navigator, which has a lot of similarities to this and I think has a bit more utility um, because of the way it's implemented. So I will hope to see you then. And um, as always, thanks for watching. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.